Hello everyone. Welcome to the Congregation of Yahweh Centre Church Nottingham Sabbath Service. You are more than welcome to join us to receive from Yahweh through this service. Welcome. Just before we go any further, I will like, like to say that as a church, we do use God's name. His name is Yahweh, and we use his son's name, which is Yeshua. But you be free to use the names that you are most comfortable with. That's perfectly good. Okay? Right. So, wherever you are in our world right now, joining in this meeting, being part of this service, I want you to know that Yahweh sees you. And more importantly, he loves you. He loves me. He loves us. The Bible tells us that he loved us so much that he was willing to give his one and only son to die in our place so that we could have fellowship with him, so that we could get to know him. That is how important you are, I am, to Yahweh. And that is amazing. I want you to hold on to that throughout this time, that we are important to Yahweh. Okay, so how are you? How have you been getting on? What's it been like for you this week? Have you managed to get everything done that you had hoped to get done? And also, have you had time to sit with Yahweh? Have you had time to meet with him and fellowship with him? Have you made that time, should I say? That's important. Now, you know, just before um, this coronavirus lockdown, one of our lead ministers had a word from Yahweh. Yahweh spoke to him and he shared that with us as a church. And Yahweh simply said to us, or simply said to him, he said, wait for me. Wait. Now, interestingly enough, I have been thinking about that and ever since that's been something that's been on my heart what did, what did Yahweh mean by that you know because wait for me wait for him is very different to waiting on him trusting him to do wait for him it's a little bit like you know you know you tap somebody on the show and say hang on there wait wait for me don't go don't don't do it just wait for me and I believe that's a very important message for the church. Yahweh wants us to wait for him, to instruct us, to show us what he wants, to show us his plans. He wants us to wait for him until he tells us what to do. I believe that even though we're in this lockdown, in the spiritual realm, we're still in a fight, in a battle. Battle for souls, battle for lives, battle to hold fast to the truth that Yahweh has given to us. And Yahweh, he is the commander in chief. And he wants us to be obedient to him. That means we have to wait for him to tell us what to do. It can be, it can be, and could be a matter of life and death. So I want to encourage us as a church, as we go through the year, go further on into this year that we will do what Yahweh said and that is wait for him. That means taking time to sit in his presence, taking time to listen to what he has to say to us, taking time to present to him our plans, our lives. 
taking time to know his voice and know when it is Yahweh that is speaking to us. That's my encouragement to us today. Yahweh wants us to do that. So, as we go into this service now, I just want to encourage us to take part. We're going to have a time of worship, we're going to have scriptures, and we're going to have a, a testimony, and we're going to hear a little bit about sharing, about giving. In our worship today, people, I'm really asking that we take part. This is the part where we can join in. Let us sing with all our hearts. Let us lift our voices and our hands. Let us just worship Yahweh. If you can play an instrument, pick up that instrument and play. If you like to dance, dance in your home. Dance, take part, enjoy, be a part of what Yahweh is doing and praise him because he is worthy and thank him because he deserves it. I'm going to pray now as we go into worship. So Yahweh Father, I thank you because you are in control. I thank you Yahweh because you have this world in your hand. You have this world in your hands and you know exactly what is going on. So we need not be afraid. We need not be anxious because you, Yahweh, are almighty. And nothing has surprised you about what's happening because you are the creator of the universe. And so we ask, Father, that you will minister to all of our hearts in this service. We give this service over to you and we ask that you will minister to all of our hearts and that you will give us what we need from you in this service. I pray and ask these things in your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yahweh. I'm going to pass on to you now, Samuel, to lead us. I praise Yahweh together. I just came to praise Yahweh. I just came to praise Yahweh. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to praise Yahweh. I just came to praise Yahweh. I just came to praise Yahweh. I just came to praise His holy name. I just came to praise Yahweh. When He came into my life, one very My life, and he showed me a better way. He said he'll never depart, and this is why I say I just came to praise Yahweh. 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 Let's sing that again. I just came to praise Yahweh. I just came to praise Yahweh. I 
And he showed me a better way He said he'll never depart And this is why I say I just came to praise Yahweh I just came to praise Yahweh I just came to praise Yahweh just came to praise his holy name. I just came to praise Yahweh. We will pray. Oh. 
our heart. Let's worship Him. I just want to praise. Lift my hands and say, I love you. You are. Today's scripture readings are taken from both the Old and New Testaments. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap or store away in barns, Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you much more valuable than they? Can any of you add one hour by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how Yahweh clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown in the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or, what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans run after all these things 
and your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. So trust in Yahweh and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in Yahweh and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to Yahweh, trust in him and he will act. Yahweh is with you when you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all our, their hearts. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Seeking God First by Deborah Ann I'm seeking God first. Before I do anything else, I will be looking unto Him, not my wretched self. I'm seeking his kingdom for my daily bread, focusing on the destination of the glory that lies ahead. I'm seeking in my Bible what he has for me today. I'm asking him to show me his true and righteous way. I'm going to discover the path he has for me. I'm going to attempt to try it with all my physical energy. I'm going to seek God with all my heart and soul. I'm going to make it my life's one and only goal. I'm going to put God first before anything else. No one will come between us not even my old wicked self. Hello and Shalom. My name is Nathan and I just have some words of encouragement for you all today. Okay, I'm going to start off with a story. And my story comes from the book of John chapter 15. And it's a story of a man and his two sons. This man wanted to leave his inheritance to his two only sons before he died. One of his sons came to him one day and asked his father for his inheritance now. So the father agreed. However, it wasn't long before the son had spent all of his money and before he knew it, he had nowhere to live and nothing to eat. The man became so hungry that he went to eat the food given to the pigs. It was in that moment that the son realised that even his dad's servants ate better than he was, so he decided to go back home to his father. When his father saw him coming home, he welcomed him with open arms and ordered a great feast, because his son had finally come back home to him. It was only when the son had hit rock bottom that he realised that he had made a mistake and that he needed help. I love this story because it reminds me of when I too hit rock bottom. I needed help. I needed a saviour. I would gotten myself into such a mess. No one could help me. Not family, not money, nothing. It was only then at rock bottom that I asked Yeshua to come and help me. And just like that, just like the father in the story, he welcomed me with open arms and changed my life forever. 
The world at this moment is upside down with this pandemic. If you're feeling lost about it, or you don't know which way to turn, Yeshua is waiting with open arms to welcome you back to him and to give you peace. So we don't have to fear anything from COVID-19 or anything else this world throws our way. I just want to encourage all of you watching to receive Yeshua's free gift of salvation by inviting him into your life. All you need to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Yeshua is who he says he is and you will be saved. You, he will receive you with open arms and pull you out of any trouble you may be in in this moment or worry that you may have on your heart. I would like to leave you with this scripture from Psalm 121 and it says this I look up to the mountains does my help come from there my help comes from Yahweh who made the heavens and the earth he will not let you stumble the one who watches over you does not slumber I pray that this message has blessed you Shalom family Hi everybody. We hope you've enjoyed the meeting so far and that you've received something from Yeshua. It's now time for us to give something back to Yeshua in the form of our tithes and offerings. This is part of our worship and instructions will be given at the end of how we can give. Before, we'd just like to put up three little pictures. The first one which is Gail's going to put up. Does everybody know what it is? If you don't know, it's a piece of flint, which is a very hard stone. All right. The thing about a flint is that you need to hammer it. And all you get out of a piece of flint is sparks and chips. The second one, which is easier one, is a sponge. All right. To get water out of a sponge, we need to squeeze it. And the more we use pressure, the more we squeeze it, the more we will get out of it. And the third and last one is the honeycomb. Now I like honey. And the honeycomb just overflows with its own sweetness. So which kind of giver? Are we? Are we a flint? Hard to get something out of us? Or are we a sponge? You've got to put pressure on us to give something. Or are we like the honeycomb, where we just overflow and give out of the overflow of our heart? We read in the Bible of a lady called Mary, who gave something that was very special and very expensive to Yeshua. What did she do with what she gave to Yeshua? Well, we know the story, don't we? She brought a jar of precious, expensive perfume and she broke this open on Yeshua's head and it poured right down to his feet. And to some of the disciples' disgust, they were thinking, well, we can spend this and get more money for it. Why is she wasting it on, on something like this? The words of a fa uh, famous song come back to my mind. I'm sure most of us have heard it. And it says, broken and spilled out, just for love of you, Yeshua. Now, the reason why we should be given is not because we've got plenty or not because we've got a little bit, but because of our love for Yeshua and because of his love for us. He gave us his all, didn't he? So, why shouldn't we give him something back? So let's be like the honeycomb, overflowing in our giving, not just in our offerings and tithes, but of ourselves as well. We may only have a mite to give, or we may have a million to give, but it depends on how we give it. So let's give our tithes and our offerings now out of a full heart of love for Yeshua because of his love for us and what he's done for us.
Wow, thank you, Gail and Roger. That was a really good thought for us to consider. What kind of giver am I? Am I the flint? Am I the sponge? Or am I the honeycomb? I think we all should think about that and answer it for ourselves. So thank you, Gail and Roger. And I also want to thank Samuel for the worship. I really hope that everybody joined in. Did you? Did you lift your hands? Did you worship Yahweh? Did you sing? This is what it's all about. It's the part of the service that we can all join in. And I do want to thank Isaac for the scripture. Um, they were lovely. Again, they were referring to um, seeking Yahweh, waiting for Yahweh, and Nathan for your um, testimony. You know, it's an interesting thing that Yeshua is waiting for us. He's waiting for his sons and daughters to come home. So I believe there's somebody out there who needs to know this. Yeshua is waiting with his arms wide open, waiting for you to come home. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next part of our meeting. And I'm going to introduce you to our speaker, who is Elliot Walker. And he is going to bring us the next thought on the Beatitudes, which is, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. And in some versions, it says, will be satisfied. So, Elliot, thank you. Well, hello, everybody. I just want to give you a warm welcome wherever you are wherever you find yourself today on this Saturday afternoon. It's so good to have you with us. I've been so blessed to um, hear about what's been going on in people's lives, the encouragement, the scriptures. It's been absolutely fantastic. I hope you're doing um, okay during these unprecedented times. And that is what we are in at the moment, unprecedented times. But even in this time, I still believe that Yahweh is doing a work. Yahweh is doing a work in my life and he's doing a work in your life. That's what I truly believe. Even though these things are going on in our world at the moment, Yahweh doesn't stop. Yahweh keeps moving. And what's amazing is that a couple of months ago, those of you who are part of our church family will know this, is that um, Alcott Walker, my dad actually, Alcott Walker, um, he said to us um, that Yahweh had spoken to him and had asked for the church to wait. Just asked for the church to wait upon him and see what Yahweh says to us. And looking back at it now, that was so needed. That was so needed. And looking back, I just think Yahweh knew exactly what was going to happen. None of us could have thought, none of us could have believed what situation we'd find ourselves in now. But the Heavenly Father did. Yahweh knew. And that's why he told us to wait. So looking back at it now, I really appreciate us having that opportunity to wait. And you know, in the midst of trouble, because we are, we are in trouble, the world is in trouble at the moment. I know that my God will never leave us or forsake us. This new normal that we find ourselves in, maybe that's Yahweh telling us that we need to have a new normal with him. So if you've been with us for the past couple of weeks, you will have seen that um, we've been looking at the, the, bless, the bless statements, the Beatitudes, as people call it. As I think it's a made up word, but the Beatitudes. And if you haven't seen that, then I don't know where you've been, but you need to have a look at that. If you just go onto our Facebook or YouTube, you'll find our recent messages around these blessed statements. And I'm going to look at the fourth um, statement that Yeshua gave, the fourth, and that one can be found in Matthew 5 verse 6. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for they will be satisfied. I'll say that again. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for they will be satisfied. Now, if you're, if you don't know me, um, or if you do know me, that's so great. <laughs> but if you don't know me, I'm a football fan. I'm a football fanatic is what you'd call it. Um, if you don't believe me, then just speak to my mom. Speak to anyone who's anyone who I've lived with will tell you that I'm a football fan. And when I say I'm into football, I mean, I'm really into football. I'm really into football. And one of the things that I have been struggling with these past couple of months is that there's been no football whatsoever 
no football whatsoever and there's so many questions that are just up in the air when is the season going to finish is the season going to finish are we going to just cancel it all now i support liverpool if you didn't know that i support liverpool and one thing that we don't want to happen liverpool fans is for the league to be cancelled because you know why for 30 years we've had no league title we haven't won a single league title i'm 23 years old i haven't seen liverpool lift a premier league trophy and currently at this moment i'm almost stressed out thinking that the one time that we're actually definitely going to win it only needing i think it was three or four points to win the league all of this happens <laughs> all of this happens and as a liverpool fan it's just it, this all this type of thing always happens with us. We're so close um, to getting to the end, to getting to the finish line, and, <laughs> and something happens. You know, I still remember those dark days at school where there was nothing for me to celebrate about as a Liverpool fan. I was belittled. And to this day, I still remember going into school that day when Steven Gerrard slipped and cost us <laughs> the Premier League title. Now, this isn't a message about Liverpool, although maybe I'd like it to be, I don't know. No, this isn't a message about Liverpool. But the reason I'm talking about Liverpool is because fans have been hungry for this league. Liverpool fans have been hungry for this league. So hungry, in fact, that it's, it's almost consumed them, this idea of us winning the league for the first time in 30 years. Now, in that, in that same way, that same hunger, that same desire, can't we, can't we turn that towards the Father? Be hungry for his presence. Go after his presence. Go after him. Now, if we look at that scripture, um, the blessed are those who hunger and thirst. If we look at that, it could be that you, if you, you don't know about it, you could just think, oh, she was just talking about um, just food, just being hungry, just genuinely being hungry and thirsty, like literally. Hey, it could have been. I, I can't read Yeshua's mind. He could have been talking about that. But I believe that within what he was saying, that was, he was saying so much more. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. It says blessed. Yeshua is saying, I believe that we will be blessed if we seek the Father's presence. I think that Yeshua was saying that we need to be hungry for Yahweh. Now, I'm not telling you that you need to be a cannibal. No, no, not a cannibal whatsoever. No, nothing like that. You're not wanting to eat flesh. But I believe that he's saying that he wants us to go after him. The way that Liverpool fans are hungry for that title is the same way that we can be hungry for Yahweh, can be hungry for Yeshua. Because it's in Yahweh's presence that change occurs. It is in Yahweh's presence that change occurs. The Bible is peppered with um, times where Yeshua has done that very same thing that has gone after Yahweh's presence. Luke chapter 6 says that he spent the night praying to Yahweh. And that's just one way that we can go after Yahweh, that we can seek the Father. Now, at the end of the verse, um, it says that you shall be satisfied, that you shall be satisfied. Now, what does that mean? Well, I want to tell you a story. It was a couple of years ago, my good friend, um, Pritam Josephs, if you don't know him, um, then you need to get to know him because he's a really cool guy. Shout out to Pritam if you're watching this. Me and him went to my grandma's house for some Friday night food. Now, if you don't, if you've never experienced going to um, a grandma, it doesn't have to be your grandma, this has to be somebody's grandma and going around for food, then... I encourage you, when this lockdown period is over, that's one of the first things that you need to do because it's grand, grandparents will make sure you're fed. They will make sure you're fed. So me and Pritam went to my grandma's house. We had some nice, some nice, oh, just thinking about it, some nice food. And Pritam 
was hungry at the time. I can remember him saying that he, he was ready for some food. And we were sat in the living room eating and something happened which was which was quite, it was, it was interesting to say the least. So I was sitting there eating my dinner, um, chatting with Prisa, and then there was a bit of silence. And a couple of minutes went past and I turned over to Pritam and he, he was asleep. He had um, fallen asleep whilst eating his food. And if you don't know what that experience is called, some people call it the itis, the itis. And that is when you've eaten so much or you've eaten so well that you've just got to lay back and sleep. And he was like that for a while, a good 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. And when he woke up, my other cousin had already come to the house and was sat next to him. So Pritam just woke up, looked at it, looked at my cousin, said, you're right, mate, and just carried on eating. Yahweh wants to satisfy our needs, not our wants, but our needs. All he asks is that we seek him. Now, Pritam was satisfied beyond his wildest content when he was tucking into that food. Can't we have that same experience when we go after the Father, when we seek Yahweh, when we pray to him, when we get into his word, read the Bible, we can be satisfied. I call it the holy itis. We can have that holy itis. But if we look at John 6, 35, it says that... Um, I am the bread of life. Now, how some people might be thinking, how can um, that satisfy us um, seeking the Father, going after Yahweh? Well, I can tell you, it's through. You can be satisfied through a relationship with His Son Yeshua. John six thirty five. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Now, again, I'm not saying that. Um, that's physical, um, physical hunger as in eating and physical um, being parched, being um, thirsty for water. But Yeshua is telling you, Yeshua is telling me that he is the bread of life. He will satisfy us beyond our wildest dreams. Not what we need, not what we want, sorry, but what we need. He will satisfy us if we thirst after him. He will satisfy us. If we hunger after him, he will satisfy us. Let's go after that holy itis, that holy itis. Now, you may be watching this um, and you just might be thinking, what is what's this guy talking about? Um, he's just on my screen, just chatting, just chatting rubbish. Well, if you think that, hey, I still love you. <laughs> but... You might think that, that, that this doesn't relate to you when, in fact, I tell you that it does. It really does. If you just think about your life, what are the things that you hunger for, what you thirst after for? Is it relationships? Is it popularity? Is it love? Those are things. That, is it money? Those are things that people in our world go after, are hungry for, are thirsty for, that it consumes them. But Yeshua is telling us that all those things mean nothing because if we can have a relationship with him, with Yahweh, we can be satisfied. Not what we want, but what we need. Now I just want to um, close with just um, talking about the parable of the sower. This is um, a parable that Yeshua told when um, he was with his disciples and the crowds came. It's, it's funny that Yeshua was a popular guy because <laughs> wherever he went, crowds followed. You know, it says that we need to be like Yeshua. Hey, if we, if I could have a crowd follow me, I'd, I mean, I don't know if I'd like it, but Yeshua had a crowd that had gathered around him and he told this parable of the sower. And if you don't know it, check out Luke chapter 8 you'll find that's that parable in there and he mentioned how the farmer was um throwing some seeds out hoping to get that nice food to get that nice um harvest in and um some seeds went into um went onto the path and the birds picked up those seeds 
Um, seeds went onto the rocky ground, but there was no moisture because they were thirsty, but there was no moisture. They died. And some seeds went into thorns, which they started to grow, but then the thorns choked them. And there was finally seeds that went onto good soil. Seeds that went onto good soil so that when they were hungry, they were nourished. When they were thirsty, their thirst was quenched. Now I wanna ask you, what seed do you think you are? What seed do you think you are? And if it's not the seed, if you're being true to yourself and it's not the seed that you'd want to be, what seed do you want to be? Because that's the amazing thing about Yeshua, is that he's not bothered about your past. He doesn't judge you on your past. He's worried about your future. He cares about your future. Yeshua has given us a second chance through what he did because he loves us. And it's no um, little type of love. It's no puppy dog love. This is ride or die type love. This is I'll sacrifice myself on the cross for you type of love. And that's why he's worthy to be praised. So to conclude, I believe that this period of lockdown is going to unlock something in our hearts. It's going to unlock something in the hearts of those who are hurting, those who are going through it, because I'm being real. There's a lot of people that are going through some difficult times right now with what's going on in the world. But I want to tell you that Yeshua wants to come into your life and satisfy you. There are things in the world that you may be going after to satisfy you, but there's only one thing that will truly, truly satisfy you. And that's a relationship with Yeshua and a relationship with Yahweh. He wants to come into your life and show you what true love really is. Now in these unprecedented times, let's turn to the one who will never leave us or forsake us. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst, for they will be satisfied. Thank you for bringing that word to our hearts today. Have we been challenged? Have you heard Yahweh speak to you today? I know I have. There is nothing in this world that will satisfy like Yeshua does. No matter what we are seeking, no matter what we're running after, it will turn up empty, will not satisfy our hearts and our souls. Only Yeshua can do that. And so I want you to take serious consideration of what you've heard today. We've heard that Yeshua can save. We've heard that Yeshua can satisfy. We heard that Yahweh is able to add to us all we need if we will seek him first. What are we going to do with what we've heard today? Yeshua, thank you for the sacrifice you made for us. Father Yahweh, thank you that you sent Yeshua because you loved the world. You loved humankind. You loved us enough to give of your self, to give what was most precious to you. And for that reason, there is nothing in this world that will satisfy the longings of men's heart, but Yeshua himself. 
And if we seek after him, and if we seek to follow him and to do his will and to do what he wants us to do, if we seek him and do what he did, then we will be satisfied. We will be full. So thank you, Yahweh, for your son, Yeshua, and thank you that he is the answer to our world today. Thank you that he alone satisfies. And I pray that anyone and everyone that is listening to this service today, that's in this service today, will understand that only Yeshua satisfies. Only he will heal the heart and mend the brokenness and give us life and give us life abundantly. And I pray that we'll accept his sacrifice, accept his love, accept what he did at Calvary and seek him first before any other thing, any other person. I pray all these things Father Yahweh, in the name of your Son, Yeshua. Amen. I hope you've been blessed, everyone. Take care and have a good week. See you next week. Yahweh bless.